Hi all. As the title say, today we are going to talk about how to synchronize host and guests in a combined tracing session, and we will discuss a method to infer how well the algorithm use performed. But let's start by presenting ourselves. My name is Stefano. I'm a student at the University of Turin studying computer science. I'm currently carrying out an internship at SUSE, where we analyze what we are presenting today in the second part of the presentation. Hello. My name is Cetumir Strianov, and uh, I'm part of VMware Open Source Technology Center, where me and my team work mainly on F-Trace and its user space ecosystem, tracing libraries, TraceMD, and kernel shark. Before joining VMware, I was working on design and implementation of system and network software for various network devices. I had a lot of experience in that area. This talk is about guest uh, host and guest tracing using F-Trace. So I will tell a few words about F-Trace for those of you who have never heard of it. F-Trace is the official tracer of the Linux kernel. It has been part of the kernel since 2008, started by Steven Rosdet as part of the kernel's real-time patch. F-Trace is enabled by default in the kernels of the most Linux distributions. It's very popular and widely used by kernel developers. It allows you to look inside every corner of a wife running kernel. Almost any function can be traced, also a few thousands predefined events in the kernel. So we have a Linux host running or one or more Linux guest virtual machines. Combining traces from um, all running kernels can be a powerful approach for analyzing host guest interactions, race conditions, or any hard to debug complex problems where host and guest kernels are involved. There is F trace in each kernel. What more is needed? Uh, we need infrastructure for configuring F trace on each kernel, starting simultaneously the trace, collecting the traces, and saving them in files and displaying uh, all of them in a nice way that is easy to view and correlate the events. F-Trace uses local clocks for timestamping the events. So in order to merge them, all events must be in the same time space. That's it, events timestamps must be synchronized. And uh, the accuracy of this synchronization is essential. The timestamps are with uh, nanoseconds precision. There is already a user space tool that is designed to configure F-Trace, control the tracing and collecting the data and save it in a file, TraceCMD. TraceCMD is uh, easy to be extended to support host guest tracing, but uh, there are a few challenges that uh, have to be solved. Fast transfer of huge tracing data between host and guest and uh, synchronizing events timestamps. Depending on the trace configuration, numbers of trace CPUs and a lot of the machines, uh, gigabytes of trace data can be generated each second. This data must be transferred to the host during the trace and saved in files. A few methods were tested and compared, each with its own pros and cons. Numbers in that table were measured on my laptop, an 8-core Intel i5 CPU with 16 gigs of RAM. Using TCP IP is the most generic and universal solution, which can be used in any environment and does not require any support from the hypervisor. But obviously it is too slow as the data passes through the whole IP stack of the kernel. This solution also has security concerns as uh, anyone could access the open TCP port. PyFOS and VSockets have similar performance, though the PyFOS are slightly faster. They have no security concerns as the TCP IP solution. 5.4 looks uh, like the best choice, but it has a few limitations. It supports one to one unidirectional communication only, so a 5.4 is needed for each direction. It cannot be used for nested virtualization use cases where the inner guest cannot establish 5.4 to the host. 5.4s are supported only on KVM hypervisors. These sockets uh, seem to be a more applicable solution. They support one to many bidirectional communication, work for nested virtual machines, and have wide hypervisor adoption. These sockets are chosen as default transport for guest to host trace data, data transfer, but uh, there is an option to use FIFOS on KVM hypervisors as uh, they give better throughput. 
Synchronizing of events timestamps is critical. Kernel events might happen within a few nanoseconds interval. The more generic approach is to use a PTP-like algorithm between host and guest. PTP is uh, already supported by the hypervisors. There is a paravirtualized clock, which, which uh, uses a shared TC page between host and guest. And on top of uh, this PV clock is implemented KVM clock. But uh, all these are used to synchronize the guest clock with the host. Our goal is not to modify the guest clock just because of the tracing. We want only to find uh, the offset between timestamps of the traced events. Of course, if clocks are already synchronized, you can use them. The PTP protocol is designed for high packet, uh, high precision clock synchronization in sub-microsecond range for a local network. To achieve such accuracy, there are two important conditions. The packet transit time must be equal in both directions, from client to server and from server to client, and uh, using hardware timestamping of the PTP packets. Obviously, obviously, these conditions are not met in the host guest scenario. The round trip time is not symmetric and uh, there is no hardware to record the timestamps. But uh, these issues can be overcome. F-Trace itself can be used to track the timestamps by using trace markers. Each time a packet is sent, an F-Trace event is generated. Timestamps of these events are used to calculate the, the, the offset. It is not as good as using hardware timestamping, but uh, it is good enough to achieve reasonable accuracy. Guest is the server site in this PTP packet exchange. Uh, that way, the inaccuracy caused by the scheduling of the virtual CPU is bypassed. Performing the PTP packet exchange hundreds of times in a series um, and filter the best matches and calculate the average. Our tests uh, show that if at least 500 PTP packets are exchanged, the inaccuracy caused by the CPU cache, preemption, and task migration could be mitigated. But uh, the guest clock is something virtual, as a whole guest machine. It is uh, calculated by the hypervisor. If uh, there is an easy way to access this hypervisor internals from the user space, the synchronization task is not a problem anymore. We have it for KVM. The TSC clock offset, scaling, and ratio and fraction, fraction bits are exposed through the debug file system. And this simple formula can be used to calculate the guest clock. But uh, it is not possible to use this approach in all cases. F3 supports multiple clock sources for the events timestamping, and uh, the TSC X86 is uh, one of them. We have this information for, K for KVM hypervisor only. All these conditions are met. If all these conditions are met, KVM uses an F tracing configured um, to use TSC clock source. A very high accuracy can be achieved. But for other, other cases, the PTP like algorithm is available. It has good, good enough results for most uh, use cases. All this is already available. The latest release of TraceMD 2.9 uh, has support for host and guest tracing. Most of the logic is implemented in libraries, uh, libtrace event, libtracefs, libtracemd, uh, which uh, can be used to build your own tools. There is also a Python interface to these libraries, still in still development, but uh, all this functionality will be available for Python also. The latest kernel shark release 2.0 can visualize host and guest traces in a nice and clear way. Here uh, on this screenshot, each guest CPU is mapped to the corresponding host task that runs that virtual CPU. And these horizontal bars in the host task represent the time slot between the VM enter and VM exit hypervisor events in which the physical CPU is given to the guest. The guest events are visualized on top of that bar. It is easy to visualize, to visually correlate the events and see them below in the list. Okay, that was all from me. Now Stefano will describe his work on, uh, on evaluating host and guest traces. Now, Stefano. Thanks, Setomir. Let's suppose to have just finished a host guest tracing session. How can we know if all going well? How can we know if the generated traces are trustable enough? 
So this is the main goal of the second part of the presentation, to find a way to check how well the synchronization algorithm use perform, in this case, PTP or KVM, but could be any kind of algorithm. This main goal can be analyzed under two different aspects, the validation, so if at least the synchronization process work properly, and the synchronization evaluation, in order to detect the accuracy and the error rate itself. For the validation process, two important events are going to be tracked, the KVM entry and the KVM exit. Um, as we know, the former report the execution of virtual CPU instructions and the latter vice versa. So in order to say that the synchronization algorithm did its work properly, we expect to see only guest events inside the KVM entry KVM exit section and vice versa for host events outside. Otherwise, some problems in the synchronization process occur. So by keeping in mind desired behavior, here we have an example of a valid trace. And as we say, there are no guest events after a KVM exit and no host events after a KVM entry. Instead, here we have an example of a not valid trace. As we can see, the guest events are all four positioned after a KVM exit, which is clearly a synchronization error. For the case of host events inside, not all of them are errors. In fact, what we've seen so far can be applied straightly, since there are events that are allowed to be where they are in terms of trace mode position, as the events visible in the trace, for example. Uh, since this kind of situation happens frequently inside a single, a single trace, the tool has to handle this discrepancy, and we'll see how. For the evaluation process, we can have multiple paths to follow. Uh, the one we decided to pursue is based on looking for specific sequences of events in the merged trace. The idea is to find events that, if seen on one side, host or guest, they have to lead to another specific event on the other side. Since we know that has to always happen, we can use the alternance to infer the accuracy by looking at timestamps. If the sequence would change, it's clear that we can't use it since we can't rely on C, the expected event on the other side. And if a sequence we know doesn't have to change actually changes, we have found a synchronization error already detected by the validation phase before. To sum up, the two requirements are consequentiality and no changes in every scenario. The first of those kind of sequences that we have found is related to actual to how actually a timer can be armed in virtual environments. On bare metal systems, it consists on simply writing a value on a register, the TSC deadline MSR, and when the timer expires, an interrupt is generated. As we know, instead, in case of virtual environments, these kind of mechanisms can't work straightly, since a virtual machine, due to its nature, uh, can turn it to write on um, a physical MSR register. Thus, in order to really write value in the register, or rather to permit the host to handle the request according to the selected clusters, the host has to take back the control of the execution flow, leading to a VM exit, directly visible in a trace by looking at KVM exits with reason MSR write. Thanks to this, by now we already have two points that could be possibly related, the writing of the MSR deadline timer and the KVM exit with reason MSR. The last thing that we need is to find an event that will actually lead to the use of that MSR. As we can expect, uh, we have noticed that the HR timer subsystem uses the TSC deadline MSR seen before when in TSC deadline mode. And this can be tracked down by looking at events like HR timer start, HR timer cancel, and HR timer expire exit. So now we have a valid sequence to use. We can see it on the exit side, as visible in the trace example, by the HR timer start event on the guest leading to the KVM exit uh, or the KVM one with reason MSR right. And on the entry side, by the KVM entry event on the right MSR1 on 6E0, which is the TSC deadline MSR address. The second sequence can be found by narrowing down the idle loop and observing how this is handled in virtual context. As we know, when a CPU goes idle, a special task, the idle task, gets selected by the scheduler and start to be executed. The work of the idle task consists in the execution of the idle loop, composed by two main portions, the selection of the idle state by the governor and the actual transition to the selected state. The transition itself is also visible in the traces by a specific trace point, which report the start of it along with the upcoming state. This also happens when a guest virtual CPU goes idle, but there's a substantial difference. The CPU is virtual. That means she cannot really go in a C state. Thus, the host has to handle this process. And since the execution flow is held by the guest, that would lead to a VM exit. And again, this alternance of host and guest state is really precious for the analysis that we are performing, since we now know that a C state change on the guest side and the upcoming VM exit are strictly correlated. 
Let's check the sample. Summarize what we have said so far. When we see a CPU idle event on the side, we know that we'll see a KVM exit where it is an halt. Second configuration can make the sequence invalid, like idle equals pull, because that will lead to unconsequential events, because the virtual CPU doesn't, uh, doesn't leave voluntarily the physical CPU. But this is a really borderline case, and the idle halt is usually selected by default. Okay, now we have finally two sequences that can be used. And now that if you have these sequences, the last step is to actually understand and select a way to retrieve information from them, useful to estimate the accuracy of the tracing session. What we have decided to do is to calculate the duration of each sequence found in the traces by subtracting the timestamps of the events inside. And so each result as a um, sample. So we are creating event data. After collecting all of them, the mean and the standard deviation for each sequence type is computed. The combination of them will estimate the general performance of the algorithm used. Another idea could be to infer at runtime a standard baseline of how much the entire sequence has to take and calculate the difference from it, which is an idea that could be developed in the next version of the tool. And here we come at the final two. By now, this first version of it, which is a prototype, can handle more than one guess with more than one CPU. The dash and option was included in order to exclude events from the validation um, process that are not related to synchronization problems, uh, as we have seen in the validation, uh, validation process before. Uh, and the dash S option will dump all the found samples by every sequence. Uh, the tool itself is implemented by using libk shark, which presents a series, of, a series of essential functionalities to handle trace files and make the entire parsing process transparent. The tool itself could also be useful to rethink the positioning of some trace points, like the one that generates host events after a KVM entry. The, of this, the output of this first version of the tool reports the statistics related of, to the validation phase. So event inside and inside the kinematic magnetic section and the mean, the variance and the standard deviation for all the samples found divided by the two sequences of events. As we said before, the will dump all the samples in the format visible here, convenient for tools like the plot. It will create two different files, one for the timer event set and one for the idle event set. In case of two or more guests, the output will present the same general statistics section as before, but also specific information for every guest involved in an update to also detect which of the guests performed better and which one performed uh, worse. On the last section of the presentation, we will introduce a real case where the tool can be used for answering a question related to what Setomi said before, which performed better between the PTP algorithm and the KVM1. In order to achieve it, different scenarios will be set up. We will make the analysis on idle system, but also on stress system by using stress ng. The dash dash matrix zero parameter will be used, which starts a worker for each CPU that perform various matrix operation on floating point values. The internal analysis will consist on 30 sessions of tracing for each scenario of 20 seconds each, which is not a random number since we want a good balance between the number of samples and the lost events. That will generate around 8,000 samples for the first sequence and 3,000 for the second one. The table above shows the result obtained regarding the validation phase, which shows the percentage of how many guest events outside the KVM and KVM section were found. Uh, what we see is self-explanatory since KVM never generates this kind of, of synchronization error. Instead, for the evaluation phase, the table above sum up all the partial results obtained by the two by calculating the mean of each of them for every parameter. The results are then divided by scenarios, so no stressing, stressing all the loss, stressing all the gas, and stresses both of them, and also by sequences of events. As we can see, in every situation, KVM is far better than the PTP. Uh, we also have to notice that the HALT set that we have found can be used in a stress system since uh, that doesn't permit the CPUs to actually go side. To better appreciate this performance gap, as an example, the two charts represent respectively the mean and of the first sequence of the events and the standard deviation. As we can see, in the, mean the mean distance of KVM is always far below the PTP1, and the results obtained by KVM are also more trustable, as we can deduct by the standard deviation chart. In conclusion, host and guest tracing is possible only if the traces can be synchronized with each other. And the TraceMD offers two synchronization mechanisms for that purpose. PTP, which is much more complex to implement if compared to KVM, and as we've seen in the analysis before, is not accurate enough, but is hypervisor agnostic, which means that uh, doesn't need any information external to TraceMD itself. Uh, on the other hand, we have KVM, which has a simpler implementation and is, is much more accurate compared to PTP, as we've seen, but relies on debug FS entries. And this dependence can be a problem 
is DebugFS a stable enough API? And what happens if DebugFS is not present at all in a system, as an example for security reasons or on a production system? The question then arises, are there ways to access the needed information? For example, a new system call, maybe an hyper call from the guest to access the data of the host, or what else can be done? If you have any feedback or idea, feel free to contact us. Here are the links for the tools discussed in the presentation and the acknowledgements to all those who helped us during the work. And that's all, and thanks for your attention.